Bart Thrasher was born in 1869, just a few years after the end of the Civil War. And it was a time of poverty, especially for people in the rural South. Maybe it was that tough upbringing that turned him into such a, a mean outlaw. Or maybe it's just who he was. The territory that Bart Thrasher rode was called Bibb County, but the locals called it Bloody Bibb because it was really an extension of the wild, wild west, where outlaws and bandits rode rampant over the countryside, and life had little value for men like Bart Thrasher. Thrasher was no stranger to murder, and he committed the ultimate offense on two separate occasions. Those murders had led him to two individual murder sentences. In 1895, Thrasher was serving time in a prison called Pratt Mines Penitentiary. It was a heavy labor camp, and he escaped by placing dynamite against the wall and then fleeing through the hole that he'd created. At least four other men fled with him, and they formed a gang that hid in the hills of Bloody Bib. Those hills would become their refuge, their base of operations, and their hiding place for the reign of terror that was about to follow. Once Thrasher was on the outside again, he immediately returned to a life of crime. On a cold December night, just a few days after Christmas, Thrasher and his band of outlaws wearing masks rode into the town of Horse Creek where they robbed seven men over the course of the evening. One man refused to put his arms up when he was being robbed, so they shot him dead. This wanton behavior put Thrasher in the crosshairs of a deputy sheriff named Henry Cole. Cole had been responsible for the death of one of Thrasher's friends, an outlaw named Jim Morrison. Thrasher and Morrison were disciples of another legendary band of outlaws called the Rue Burrow Gang, and wherever Thrasher and Morrison had ridden, they'd left chaos behind. Now, Henry Cole saw an opportunity to take out another outlaw, and he set his sights on Bart Thrasher. Deputy Sheriff Henry Cole formed a posse, and they lay in wait in an area like this, just waiting for Thrasher to pass by. Along came a man on horseback with a Winchester rifle slung over his shoulder. The posse jumped up and shouted for him to surrender. The man went for his rifle, so they shot him dead. When Cole investigated the body, he found that he had not killed Bart Thrasher, but had instead killed Thrasher's younger brother, Elisha Thrasher. When news of his brother's death reached Bart, he was enraged. He swore bloody death on every member of the posse who was responsible for the loss of his brother. Thrasher wasn't one to make idle threats. In August of 1896, he rode into the town of Blockton, where he shot dead a man named Griffin Bass in the street outside of Wall Drugstore. You see, Bass had been a member of the posse, and with Bass's death, Bart's bloody vengeance had begun. What follows terrified the entire state and made national news. Thrasher began to hunt the men responsible for the death of his brother, sneaking into the houses of those who'd been in the posse and pinning death threats on their pillows. The night after he killed Griffin Bass in the street, he snuck onto the property of N. L. Wilson, Justice of the Peace, and burned down his barn, with the horses still inside. The lawman almost caught up with Thrasher in late August of 1896. He'd brought along a pack of dogs, and those dogs caught the scent of Thrasher. But there was another man who was traveling with Thrasher, by the name of Doc Panther. This man was another outlaw, and when those dogs got the scent of these two outlaws, they started to charge forward on the trail. Cole and his men had double barrel shotguns, and they opened fire, wounding Panther in the process. The dogs led them to train tracks, where Thrasher and Doc Panther had caught a train and made their getaway. The escape from Henry Cole and his men seemed to embolden the desperados and they began to tell everybody that they came across to let the law know where they could be found. Well, that's exactly what they did, and Henry Cole finally caught up with Bart Thrasher and Doc Panther on September 15, 1896. Cole had heard that Thrasher was running a moonshine still, deep in the woods, so he took another deputy and they lay in wait beneath the bridge, just waiting for Thrasher and Doc Panther to pass. When the two men were on the bridge, 
the law rose up. They ordered Thrasher and Panther to lay down their weapons, but neither would comply, so they shot them dead. News of Thrasher's death led to a collective sigh of relief, not just in Alabama, but all over America. Newspapers as far away as New York reported on the death of Bart Thrasher and the heroism of Henry Cole, who was quickly earning a reputation as an outlaw killer who had reaped thousands of dollars in reward money. The reign of terror from the most desperate outlaw in the state had finally come to a bloody end. But even now, over a century after Thrasher rode these trails and terrorized these hills, the stories remain vivid reminders of the violence that shaped history.